so um, Rodney, you are a very accomplished author and you've published quite a few books. Um, I have just read a few of the stories from your 12 Hours of Murder, which I found very entertaining. Um, for someone who's pretty impatient when it comes to finding out details, this is great. I don't have to wait very long at all to find out who the murderer is and what the motive was. So I really enjoyed that. Um, can you tell me a little bit about what inspired you to become a writer to begin with? Uh, so I've, I've always written. Uh, it's always sort of been in my blood, I guess you could say. Um, right from uh, primary school, I used to uh, used to write little plays for uh, my classmates to put on and things. So it's always been something that, that I've found interesting and, and rewarding. Um, and just kind of drifted away from and came back to at various stages over my life. Um, but but always w was interested in doing it. I think when, when I was coming out of school, you know, there weren't the courses that are available now, um, the writing courses and the and, and essentially the opportunities to publish that that um, that we do today. So Amazon didn't exist. There were no self-publishing options. It was you you go to a publisher or not. So it, it was a lot more difficult back then to to consider the option, I guess, of of becoming a full-time writer. Um, until about six or seven years ago, and then just kind of decided that it was it was almost now or never I needed to to really just focus on it or, or not worry about doing it uh, ever again sort of thing so it just um took took the plunge and, and haven't looked back really okay. yeah I mean I will say that technology has definitely come a long way and the processes have come a long way as well so it's really cool that uh, uh, there is more opportunity for people to publish their books. Um, so, actually, because you have a lot of characters that do kind of pop up in other series that you have as well. I'm thinking about Alice, for example, and I also know Vanessa in there too. Um, how do you approach writing characters like this? Do you have, do you research them? Are they based off anyone that you know? A little bit of both. So, um it depends on the character and sometimes the characters uh are a little bit of a not not a mistake but they they sort of were never intended to be more than cameos so alice uh you know so she she's a big character for me she's been in five books of her own and, and numerous other cameos in different books she was only ever intended to be a, a a cameo appearance at the end of one of my other books so it was never she was never going to be more than sort of four or five pages long so there was no need to really kind of research her and then um when i made the decision to to expand her then you need to start looking because of her age into the research because a lot of what happened in the prime of her life was sort of the 50s and 60s so do have to um you know do and, and a lot of it happened overseas so you do have to do a lot more research into what what actually life was like in the 50s and 60s in, in England, for example, or in France. So, um, yeah, it, it does depend. Whereas others like um, Vanessa, I know a, a ton of Vanessas. Um, so, you know, it is just taking taking bits and pieces from people that I know and, and kind of merging them into one character. Okay, yeah, I feel like that's a good way to go about it. A lot of people do take inspiration from real life and I think that the people who are written about or taken as an example in books are always very flattered for the most part anyway to be included in a book um yeah i also wonder because this particular book is uh, a collection of short stories i as as even though they're short i know that they're very difficult to write because you need to get the entire plot in there like the most interesting points um you really need to capture the character and the audience so i'm just wondering what was like the biggest challenge about writing this collection of short stories for you yeah well this, this is the first time i've really done short stories um and murder mystery short stories obviously there is a, a lot more to kind of consider because you do have to to wind up the the story at the end you can't really have short stories with cliffhanger endings um mm -hmm. 
I uh, the kind of inspiration came so I, I bought a book last year which was a, a book of short stories um, based on Miss Marple so that Agatha Christie uh, Miss Marple that, that were written by obviously by other um, authors after she passed away um, and so it was really kind of looking at the fact that you can have murder mysteries that are short uh, rather than over sort of 50, 60, 70,000 words. So it was really kind of, it was quite an interesting challenge, I think, to, to look at it that way. But because I'm used to writing longer stories, it is really kind of powering it back and working out what, what do you, what's an absolute essential as part of the story and what can you leave out um, because it's sort of nice to have or it builds the world a bit more, but it's not necessary for a, a short story environment um so yeah it, it was a challenge but it was a really rewarding one and it was nice because i was able to use a lot of the characters from the other books so it wasn't really starting from scratch um i mean there were some new characters in there but it's, it's it's also a chance really to kind of show the characters that i've already used in a different setting or a different environment for them as well so um that was quite fun as well that's cool yeah um, so I do like wonder what the inspiration behind this book was like you obviously you have um, some other collections that do involve a lot of crime murder mystery um, was there something that made you really want to uh, start writing this particular series was it just because you had all these other characters who could be interesting and you wanted to elaborate on them or was there some other reason I, I mean I think for me writing has to be enjoyable and uh you know i i've been doing the full length um murder mysteries for a number of years so it's about trying to find a new way or a fresh take on things and uh i just finished um uh silver moon retirement village book uh and gotten that out earlier in the year and was really looking for something that was a little bit of a different challenge uh and then having having read this agatha christie uh short story collection last year um i kind of thought well that that might be quite interesting so i just i, I tried it i started a couple of the stories and actually found it really um really fun to to be able to wrap things up in a in a few pages uh and then move on to a different character or introduce some new characters it almost as a as a taster for for the audience to say you know do you like these characters uh is this someone that you would like to see in a, in a longer story and you know i've had quite a bit of feedback from from people that, that like my other work about one or two of the characters in particular that they would really like to see uh again in, in either their own story or, or fleshed out as part of um, someone else's story so it was a great chance just to try something a bit different and, and and keep my brain a bit fresh as well before I plunge back into a full length book. Yeah. Oh, great. That's like a nice little, um, I guess, what are they called? Focus focus group type situation where you can just test yeah. out these things on people. It doesn't take an entire book to do it. So that's pretty cool. Um, yeah. yeah, I think also you mentioned um agatha christie quite a bit do you think that she was a big inspiration for you when it came to this particular writing genre or just writing in general um <clears throat> writing in general yeah so i mean the, the the sort of things that i like to watch on tv are the sort of cozy mystery um series and things like that so it was sort of more natural to to um to lean towards that genre and when i was looking at murder mysteries or, or crime mysteries um and there's also there's a there's a lot of kind of gritty crime books out there so i wanted to do something that was more about the the mystery side of things than the the blood and guts kind of thing um but i think i mean i, I read a wide range of of mystery authors and and yeah overall it's the strong characters that really attract people so the, the kind of crime is almost secondary to who is the main character and, and are they someone that we, we want to root for and, and that we think are smart enough or, you know, cunning enough to, to solve the mystery. And I think that, for me, that was more interesting than the fact that it's 
someone's been killed let's solve the mystery it's more can this particular person so can alice solve a mystery when she's 97 or can someone else solve a mystery when they've never been involved in that before and it's it's them finding their way i think is a more interesting character arc than than if it's just some sort of hard-boiled detective who's already solved thousands of murders in the past and so they're just it's just another day at the office for them kind of thing so there was definitely a an attraction to that kind of amateur sleuth sort of thing that um that you know miss marple did very well was very good at and all of these other series that i like watching are very very similar as well okay yeah that's really cool i think that it's important to like when you write stories like this that your audience can picture themselves in these roles as well i think that um it's very yeah very powerful so that's that's good to know 